Hello and welcome to Viral Church once again. Today we're in the third week uh, of our Talking Jesus Lent course. So again we're following the theme for this week and today we're thinking about letting our light shine. So we'll be uh, taking that theme as we as we go through the service. But first we hear and join in with our first hymn. come now to our prayers of adoration and confession. So let us pray. Loving God, worthy of all praise and honour, we come to offer you our worship, to be still and know that you are God. Open our eyes to your presence. You are all good, all holy, merciful and loving, faithful and true. And we lift up our hearts with joy, our voices in thanksgiving, and our lives in adoration. We thank you, Lord, for this season of Lent, for this time which invites us to pause and take stock to reflect on the things in life that really matter. And we thank you for this time and place set apart each week, these special moments when we focus on you and to remind ourselves of your living presence. And we thank you that you want to speak to us and deepen our relationship with you. So help us to hear your voice, discern your will, and experience your love. Loving God, draw us closer to you, so that in our daily lives, we may influence our communities around us and indeed the world around us with renewed hope, vision, strength and faith. 
Amen. And now a prayer of confession. Gracious God, we thank you for the example you have shown to us in Christ, the model we see in him of faithful service. We thank you for the dedication that Christ showed throughout his ministry, the fact that he was not prepared to cut corners or take the easy way out, but rather confronted injustice and evil head on and face to face. So forgive us, Lord, when we rarely follow his example, turning a blind eye to those things we know are wrong, going along with the crowd, closing our eyes and ears to what we would rather not see or think about. We make our excuses and fall into temptation and wash our hands of difficult decisions. So gracious God, forgive us those times we have failed to speak up for right, when we have colluded in wrong and when we have lost sight of both. Renew us, we pray, through your Holy Spirit. Restore us through your love. Equip us through your power and so enable us to live faithfully as your people. For you challenge us to stand up for what is right. And we ask that you give us the courage to respond through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our video today, once again, is the introductory video uh, from our Lent course this week. And in it, we find out what happens when a little girl tries to make a difference in her world. Natty! Coming! Natty, come on! Coming! Natalie, come on! You're going to be late! Coming, Dad! Dad? Yeah? Can I have a sleepover with Molly? Daisy, Grace, Jasmine. Yeah, you can do that. Whatever Mum says, that's fine. What class have you gone today? English, maths, all those stuff. Ah, English. Hi, Miss Jenkins. Good morning, Natalie. Oh, oh let's keep moving. Come on. Keep moving. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Come on, come on, we're okay. Morning, 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 hi, hi. hi. Have a nice day. Good morning. Hi. Hey there, hey, are you all right? Good morning, good morning. Uno, dos, tres. Oh, got it? Got it. And still to come in today's show, a new song from the Tin Cat Band. But first... Morning, Dad, I'm ready. <laughs> OK, this is new. We need to leave earlier today. Oh, OK, do we? Come on, Dad. Yeah, sure. So what class have you got today? This is Mum's scar. Oh, OK. Here you go. Hi, Miss Jenkins. Good morning, Natalie. Let me help you with that. Natalie, come on, we oh. don't have time for this. Yes, we do. Thank you. Yeah. He's a bit of a bossy one, isn't he? Come on, Natty. Only if he's a little late. Oh. Bye. I'm going to put yeah. this next time. Beat yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, Dad. Well, what are we waiting for? Get that one over there. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Yeah, Thank no. you. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you so much. Well done. Morning. And then I go like that. Morning. Hi. Hi. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Hey, that's 
It's really good. Have a lovely day. See ya. That was nice of you. Well done. Do you see them now, Dad? Yeah. I see them now. Bye. See ya. And three. Best high five up. Excellent. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Natalie. Good morning. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, familiar passage called Salt and Light. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Jesus said, let your light shine before others so that they can come to know me as well. But what did he mean by that? You know, way back when I first left school, and that's getting to be quite a long way back now, I started by working in retail. First of all, I sold jewellery, and then later uh, I moved on to selling uh, electronics, mostly brown goods, hi-fis, TVs, and, and that sort of thing. And when you go to work for a company like that, they teach you how to sell so that you can uh, sell their products successfully. And one of the first systems I learned was the FAB system, F-A-B. And those stand for Features, Advantages and Benefits. And the system was quite simple. You started off with features. What does it do? Okay, what do the buttons do? What is different about this? And then you'd move on to the advantages. Why is this one better? Why should I spend an extra £5, £50, £500 on this particular model rather than the cheaper one that's next to it on the shelf? And finally you moved on to benefits. What's it going to do for me? How's it going to make my life better, richer, easier? Because the one thing they wanted us to understand when we came away from the training course was that people buy benefits. They don't buy features. They don't buy advantages. Those are just steps on the way to helping them to understand how something is going to make their lives better. And it's that that they buy. A better life, an easier life. Something that's going to make them one up on the neighbours or uh, save them having to get out of their chair quite so often because they can now shout at their smart speaker to do things. That's what people buy. A better life. And you know, it's the same when we come to think about faith. People buy into what it's going to do for their lives. We need to show people the benefits of being a Christian, what it's going to do for them. And what better way to do it than to let those benefits shine through in our lives. We have to show people that our lives are something that they would want to aspire to. It's no good just saying to them, God's made a difference in my life. 
when actually your life doesn't look any different to anybody else's. When you don't do anything different. When you don't look any happier. When you're just as miserable as the next person. Why would they buy it? Why would they buy into it? But if they see something in our lives that says, I want, I want that. You've got something that's missing in my life. That's when they start to think, is there something in this Jesus guy? Is there something in this church thing? Because these people seem to be so happy, perhaps seem to be a bit more sorted than I am. That's what Jesus was saying in this passage. If you're going to be a Christian, it's got to make a difference. Not just to you, but to the whole world. It starts with making a difference to you. Being a Christian should change us. It should give us a different outlook, different values. We see the world differently to those who don't know Christ. We perhaps see richness where others don't. We see hope perhaps where others see despair. And so first and foremost, it must make a difference in our lives and a, and a visible difference. But the second thing is that if it makes a difference in our lives, then we make a difference to the world. Because in living out the teaching of Jesus, we enrich the world. We bring something to the world that no one else can bring. In the teaching video uh, in our course this week, which is a bit too long to put up in the service, one of the people there said, I didn't particularly talk to my brother about my faith perhaps once or twice during the two or three years. But one day he came to me and said, I just need what you've got. He was living out his faith and it made a difference, a difference that was attractive, that made his brother want what he had. That's what Jesus meant when he talked about letting our light shine before others. Letting our difference stand out. You see, to bring your faith to others, you don't have to be a great preacher. Was it Francis of Assisi who is credited with the phrase, preach the gospel at all times, and if you really must, use words. Because he knew that actually our deeds, our lifestyle, speak out so much more loudly than our words. And so let's remember that as we go forward. Let our light shine before others, that they may see and understand the glory of God. And now we say our prayers for ourselves and others. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we do not always know what to ask for in our prayers, for there's so much that we do not know or understand. Yet we know that you are active in our world, moving in human hearts and events in history to fulfill your purpose. And so we come now to you and in quiet faith, we place ourselves and our world into your hands, asking that your will may be done despite everything that conspires against it. And we bring ourselves, Lord, weak, faithless, hesitant and foolish, 
We bring all that we are and all that we long to be, seeking your help and your transforming touch. And we ask that you break through our hesitation and lack of courage and enable us through the power of your Holy Spirit to be salt and light in our homes, places of work and our communities for the sake of your kingdom. We bring before you, Lord, those who are part of our lives, family and friends, neighbours, colleagues, all of those whom we meet in daily life. And at this moment, we hold in our hearts and minds those who are ill at home or in hospital, those who are caring for others, those who are bereaved those who are anxious, lonely, or struggling with the challenges of everyday life. Lord, we ask that you bring your comfort, your strength and your hope into each of their varied situations and pray that you will be all to them that they need you to be at this time. We bring our world, the rich and poor, powerful and weak, well-fed and hungry, healthy and sick, those who enjoy peace and those who endure war, those who revel in freedom and those who fight for justice. And as we come to the end of Fair Trade Fortnight, we ask, Lord, your blessing on all those involved with fair trade, lifting before you producers as they grow their crops and craft their works. For people who transport fair trade goods to market. For those who import and retail free fair trade goods. Grant them and us, we pray, a genuine commitment to fair trade for all. For all of us who shop where fair trade goods are for sale, grant us an understanding of the impact of our choices. And finally, Lord, we remember all those children and students returning to school and places of learning tomorrow. We pray for parents who naturally feel anxious and we commit to you all school staff as they continue to deliver education while keeping everyone safe on their premises. We rejoice that the number of people having received their COVID vaccination has reached 20 million, which is remarkable, Lord. And we continue to pray and give thanks for all staff in the health sector and all key workers, giving thanks for their courage, selfless service and perseverance. We pray that one legacy from this pandemic will be always to count our blessings and to appreciate much more those around us. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you are involved in our lives, active in our world, and we rejoice that you hold all things ultimately in your hands. And so we leave them confidently with you, asking only this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us once again. We'll continue to be here for you every week on Facebook and YouTube, right the way through the rest of this lockdown. Uh, up until we reopen our churches, the plan is that we reopen at Pentecost uh, in May this year, and we will look forward to being together in person then. But for now, we continue to gather online and we look forward to seeing you again next week. But now we ask God's blessing on us as we go. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us always. Amen.